Hello and uh, welcome. Uh, in the previous lecture, we, we had a quick recap of what uh, normal samples and the various descriptive statistics and how the t-distribution arises. And you saw how if you know the variance, then you can do, you know, z-test itself, right? x bar minus mu by sigma by root n, that will be the z-distribution and you are very happy to do the z-test. Now, what happens when the variance is not known with normal samples? This is a very typical situation, okay? So, once again, I am going to do a t-test for the mean. This is a test for the mean. In the sense, what is, what is the meaning of test for the mean? The test statistic is going to be x bar. It is going to be the sample mean, okay? So, that is the, that is what it means when we say uh, test for the mean, okay? The test statistics is uh, x bar, the sample mean, okay? And my null is mu equals mu naught, okay? That also is important when you test for the mean. Your, your null hypothesis is mu equals mu naught. Your test is... A test statistic is x bar and then your alternative is something about the mean. It could be right sided, you might say mu is greater than mu naught, it may be left sided, you may say mu is less than mu naught or it may be two, side, two sided, you may say mod mu minus mu naught is greater than something or, or you know mu not equal to mu naught, right, something like that. That may be the alternative hypothesis, okay. Now given that this is a right sided example, the test is going to be you reject the null if t is greater than some c. Okay, C is the critical value, right? We have seen this uh, before. Uh, T C is the what we call as the critical value, right? Critical value that helps define the acceptance and uh, rejection uh, regions, right? So the rejection region corresponds to T greater than C in the right side of things. So all this we know. What is the difference between T test and Z test? The variance is unknown now. I don't know the sigma square, so I'm going to be estimating the variance from the samples, okay? So naturally, the, the alpha computation, the significance level computation will involve the T distribution. You will see that is the difference as opposed to the Z distribution, okay? So how to compute significance level? You first have to find the sample variance, okay? So and then given H0, you know, you will see that T minus mu naught by S by root n is actually the T distribution, okay? So contrast with the Z test, What happens in the z test for the mean? Sigma is known. So, given h naught, you have t minus mu naught <coughs> by sigma by root n being this normal 0, 1, standard normal, which is the z, right? So, so contrast that with this. When you do not know the sigma, sigma is unknown, you have to estimate it as the sample variance. And when you compute probabilities for t in the, uh, in the significance uh, level calculation, you have to use this fact that t minus mu naught by s by root n is t n minus 1 because you do not know sigma, you cannot do this, okay? So for a particular sampling that you have, particular set of samples, you may have calculated the sample variance to be small s squared. If you did that, how do you find significance level? It's probability, what is significance level? It's probability of reject h naught given h naught is true, right? So that's what happens here. How do you reject H0? T is greater than C. H0 is true, mu equals mu0. Okay. So how do you compute this probability? T is greater than C. So for that, you say T greater than C is equivalent to T minus mu0 by S by root n being uh, uh, greater than C minus mu0 by S by root n. Okay. And this distribution this distribution we will approximate as t n minus 1, okay? Because, you know, I took one particular sampling here. So, you take a value for, if you look at t minus mu naught by that by root n, it is a good enough approximation that it is n minus 1, okay? Once you do that, you see, you know, it is probability that t n minus 1 is greater than c minus mu naught by s by root n, okay? So, this would be 1 minus f t n minus 1 of c minus mu naught by s by root n, okay? So, that is what is important here, okay? What is f? f t minus 1, f t n minus 1 is the c d f of t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, okay? 
So this CDF we will assume is known, just like FZ we know, we know, right? In any problem we know FZ, we know how to calculate that. This FTN minus 1 also we know, okay? So that's all, this is a t-test. You see how similar it is to the z-test, there's no need to remember any new formula here, right? It is just that you don't know sigma, you're estimating sigma. When you put it in, the test is exactly the same. So what you do for the alpha computation, the significance level computation, exactly the same except instead of using uh, z and uh, the CDF of normal 0, 1, I have to use the CDF of t n minus 1, okay? Hopefully the t-test is clear to you and that's all to it. You know, there's nothing major, uh, majorly different. It's still a test for the mean. You'll be testing for the sample mean, whether the sample mean is equal to something or it's a greater or lesser or, you know, not equal. That could be the alternative. Then this is how you do it, okay? So now, I hope you can write down a very similar thing for the left-sided test. What is the left-sided test? Alt null is mu equals mu naught. Alternative is mu less than mu naught. Then what will your T be? T, the sample test statistic is still X bar. What will be your test for the left-sided case? You will reject H naught if T is less than C, okay? Now what about the two-sided test? If your alternative is mu naught equal to mu naught, you will reject H naught if mod T minus mu naught is greater than C. That's all. That changes. Now you know the distribution of T, right? You, I mean you don't know the variance, so you'll have to sort of use this guy's, the T distribution re, re, uh, relationship to sort of roughly estimate uh, what the alpha value will be. Once you get a formula for alpha value, everything is clear, right? You can do a very similar calculation for power, right? Just like in the Z test, we do a power calculation. Given a particular alternative uh, value, you can find power against that. Okay, what will be the type 2 error probability because of considering that alternator. Okay, so now the T distribution comes in. The distribution slightly changes. It's not Z anymore. You have to, uh, given the alternative is true, the distribution of T will be uh, this, you know, uh, T, uh, T minus that mean, the alternative mean divided by some suitable S by sigma n will have a T distribution. You use that to calculate beta. Okay, so this kind of understanding, if you have all these formulae are, uh, very, very useful. Eventually, at the end of this uh, uh, lectures, we'll give you a big table which summarizes all the formulae. You don't really have to mug up all of them if you know how uh, this will, this works, okay? So let's move on to the next test. The next test is what's called the chi-square test for variance, okay? So once again, you have n iid random samples, mean mu, variance sigma squared, okay? And your null hypothesis is on the variance. You're going to say sigma equals sigma naught is my null hypothesis. Okay, so, so far we've only seen hypothesis about the mean. Now, this is a test for variance. So, you have a hypothesis for the variance. You're saying sigma equals sigma naught. And I'm, I'm going to consider a right-sided alternative. The alternative I'm going to say is sigma greater than sigma naught. Okay, and what is your test statistic going to be now? This is going to be your test statistic, right? And a very natural test statistic is the sample variance, okay? So you compute the sample variance. Of course, you also need to compute the sample mean or do it in some other way. And the test will be to reject H0 if S is greater than C, okay? So this uh, seems like a very uh, reasonable type of relationship. And uh, you reject H0 if S is greater than C. Okay, just like the test for the mean, you're testing for the variance, okay? Now, everything is in the significance level computation, right? How do you compute uh, significance level? You know that given H0, N minus 1 by sigma naught squared S square is the chi squared N minus 1 distribution. That's the crucial relationship, okay? Once you understand that, you can write down formula for the significance level. Formula for the significance level is probability that you will reject, this is the same as reject H0 given H0 is true, okay? So given H0 is true, what does that mean? Sigma equals sigma naught, right? So you manipulate this inequality. S is greater than C is the same as N minus 1 S squared by sigma naught square greater than this case. So this is equivalent to S greater than C, okay? These are all positive quantities. So this is the same as that. Do you get that? Once you do this, this has the chi-square distribution. It's the same as probability that chi-square is greater than this. So what is this? This guy is 1 minus f chi-squared n minus 1 of n minus 1 into c squared by sigma naught squared. That's it. 
So given a critical value, you have an alpha. Given an alpha, you have a critical value. You remember how to do the inverse calculation? If you know f chi squared, it's a monotonic increasing function. So f chi squared inverse is also known. There is that PPF you can use in the sci -Pi stats uh, uh, module to calculate it. So you know how to go back and forth between alpha and c. Okay, that's it. I mean, by now this should sound like uh, you know just baby practice in some sense, right? It's not maybe not quite for babies, but it's uh, something not very difficult to do. The critical thing is to understand uh, that what is the test statistic and what is the distribution of the test statistic given the null hypothesis. Once you have that, you can readily write down a formula for the significance level or the probability of type 1 error in terms of the critical value c. Once you do that, everything is well understood. Okay? So I hope you can write something similar for s being less than c, s not equal, I mean uh, the alternative hypothesis being left sided, uh, alternative hypothesis being two sided. And then also power calculation, a particular against a particular alternative hypothesis, what power do you have? What is the type 2 error probability? In other words, right? So how low is that? All those trade-offs. And then there's also the computation of number of samples we needed, right? Supposing you desire a certain significance level and a certain power against a certain alternative, how do you compute number of samples needed, right? That's also the calculation that we can do. We did it for the Z test. Um, maybe we'll see some calculations like that in your activity questions and examples, you should work it out. It should uh, it should uh, help you. And a lot of people ask, why don't you show detailed calculations of everything for every possible example and we'll repeat it, okay? That's not the point of learning, okay? That's not the point of learning from us, okay? Some of these things we'll tell you, some of these things we won't lay out every brick for you, right? So you have to learn how those are constructed and that, that learning gives you so much more uh, ability than just knowing how to repeat some steps with some small changes. Okay, so give it a shot. Take take it take take it as a challenge. Try see if you can write the same thing down for a left-sided hypothesis, for a two-sided hypothesis, right? And uh, you know, can you repeat that same type of calculation of power against an alternative uh, hypothesis? Can you repeat the same calculation of how to find number of samples uh, that we did uh, that I showed you for the Z test? How do you do it for say a chi-square test for variance? Okay. So that I think uh, is, uh, is, is good skill to develop in this course, okay? So, but anyway, this is the chi-square test. This is the first test for variance we are seeing. And uh, you see the method is more or less the same. Once you understood the foundations, it's very, very easy to write down how the equations come up, okay? Thank you.